Welcome back, everybody. Now, at the beginning of every year, most people set out resolutions and goals for self-improvement and development for the year ahead. And uh, one, of, one of those is boosting one's career and profession. With the unemployment rate sitting at 27.5%, it's absolutely no surprise why. And to tell us more, we're now joined by Dr. Linda Mayer-Dean of uh, the Institutional Advancement at Boston City Campus and Business College. Linda, a very good morning to you and uh, welcome. Good morning. First, let's start with the graduates that are fresh out of tertiary. Uh, how should they structure their CVs that they are more attractive? The most important thing is that you do an evaluation of skills that you've already acquired whilst you were studying. So whilst you are studying, it's important that you take on jobs. Don't think because you've worked as a waiter or volunteer that those things are not important. Analyze your critical skills that you have acquired, your values and your interests, and set those out clearly so that an employer can engage with what it is that your strengths are and so that they can then give you an opportunity to see that you have a match within their organization. What is it that you do? Do you advise them on their careers or on how to look for jobs? What is it basically that you do? So for us, obviously, the important thing is that everybody knows what it is that they want to do already from an early age. So we encourage people from grade 10 to go and do a career assessment. So a lot of people charge for it, but you're welcome to go to any of our Boston City campus and do the career assessment free of charge. We encourage grade 10, 11, 12 and graduates, people that are studying, they don't even have to be studying with our institution. Go and do the free career assessment so that you know what jobs are available that match not only your skills, but your interests and your, value, your values that you have. So you basically advise them on their, uh, on their careers. Are you not looking into uh, advising or even training them for, to take their entrepreneurship uh, role? The important thing with an entrepreneur is many people are born as an entrepreneur and they take that chance. You'll know, the child at school that was selling sand packets and sealing them, you might have been one of those, you know, the people yeah. that thought about those things. But for some of us, we first need to go into the career market so that we can identify what our strengths are. And we then can become employers once we have acquired those skills and we are certain about what it is that we want to do. You know, Linda, uh, these, these online recruitment sites have become very, very popular. And how can uh, potential employees maneuver around these uh, so, that, uh, so as to ensure that their profiles stand out? The most important thing is that you know what it is. If you're talking about a CV, don't put your photo on a CV and let it look like, you know, you, you're on a dating site. <laughs> That's not the intention at all. It's a, employers want to see that you're going to add value to their organizations. So play on your strengths. Look at research employers. See what it is that they want. Every CV that goes out should be different. You shouldn't have a stock standard CV. Look at the job that you're applying for. Make sure that you identify the skills that the employer wants and explain what skills you have around what it is that they're asking for. Yeah. And of course, there is this uh, trend of fly by night institutions which are illegal and unregulated and they become more active uh, around this time this year. And, uh, you know, how should we what is it that we should look out for in order in order not to fall prey to these? So the most important thing is to go onto the Department of Higher Education website and make sure that your organization is registered with the Department of Higher Education and Training. The second thing that you need to do is the program that you enrolled for must be registered with the South African Qualifications Authority. So you can go onto the SACWA website, put in the qualification that you want to study, and you'll see whether it is a registered qualification. The other important thing that you need to do is make sure that the institution that you're studying at has a work integrated learning component, okay. that they're preparing you for the world of work and the world of entrepreneurship. So, for example, with us, we have a very well set out uh, structure within our studies where we help students to find employment. We put them on learnerships, internships, and we stand by what it is that we say. Yeah. If you have studied a degree or a three-year diploma with us and you don't find a job where we can't find you an internship or a learnership, we will pay for your postgraduate studies free of charge. So look at the institution that you're studying at. What value proposition are they offering you? And are they going to assist you in your long-term career goals? Remember that you'll be changing your job three to four times yes. during, your, during your career. Yes, yes. So don't think because you're studying something now that that is what you're going to end up. But make sure that you have a career structure and a plan in place where it is that you want to be. By the time you know that you're in your 40s or your 50s, what it is that you want to achieve in your success 
in your career path and being an entrepreneur. Because the biggest thing is we must stop thinking that somebody has to employ us. We need to start thinking how do we acquire skills so that we can become employers. That's the fastest way to grow the economy. And if we're serious about investing in, in economic structure and strength, we need to ensure that our skills and our value propositions that we put back into our economy is available and yeah. structured. All right. So uh, say I get this opportunity for an interview and I just got uh, that uh, much uh, awaited call uh, to get through that interview. So what are the stages of preparation that I should go through? What is it that I should do uh, in order to ace that interview? The first thing that you need to do is make sure that you look presentable, right? Now, in some industries, presentable is, is, is a different thing. I know in the RT world and in television, it's, you totally know, it's, it's a yeah. completely different thing. Make sure that you're dressed appropriately for the institution that you're going to. So if you're going for an interview at a bank, it's going to be very different than when you're going at an art studio. The second thing is research the organization where you're going for the interview for. People want to see that you take an interest in where it is that you want to work. Know what the job requirements are and be able to speak to what your strengths are in getting that job. Okay, uh, let's talk about these recruitment agencies. What's your view on, this, on these agencies and how should we uh, use, use them to the best of our advantage? So labor recruitment indus industries is, is, I mean, there's, there's a place for them when they are in specialist uh, positions. But if you're paying anybody to find you a job, that is completely wrong and illegal. So what you need to do is if there is a student placement organization or you are in the accounting field or the bookkeeping field or the medical field and there are labor recruitment agencies that place within those fields, it's great because they've already built the relationships with those employers. So it's easier for them to then get you those interviews. A lot of organizations use labor recruitment agencies to screen CVs and to screen candidates, to do background checks, to do criminal record checks. So it's not a what about those agencies then uh, which mm -hmm. charge me for negotiating a, a perfect deal for me that will suit my needs? They're not allowed to charge you to suit the deal, you individually. The employer pays a percentage of your annual salary. That's how they advertise. So it might be you know, between 5 and 20% of your annual salary that the labor recruitment agency would receive from the employer because there's advertising costs, there's okay. obviously assessment costs, there's costs associated with finding the perfect employee for that position. But the critical thing for an employee, if you are a work seeker, make sure that your CV is up to date, that you have contactable references and that you are able to get to those interviews. My first bit of advice that I can give anyone, do not arrive late for an interview yes. because you have blown your chances. Yes. It's over. No, you, you, you're quite right. You're quite right. Well, Linda, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that is uh, Dr. Linda Mayer, Dean of Institutional Advancement at Boston City Campus and Business College. And uh, let's...